Peace and my family, I hope that you are well. So I am recording this whole video dedicated to my journey as a vegetarian. I've been vegetarian for about seven years now and on the journey I have learned a lot. Um, I learned a lot about my body, a lot about food, the effects of food on the body. So in this video, I'm just gonna discuss what made me become a vegetarian, uh, the transition, transitioning from a meat eater to vegetarian, which was real, and also how I learned what to eat as a vegetarian and then I'll end with what I actually eat now as a vegetarian um so let's get started y'all I vow to keep it all the way real in this video you about to see photos and everything so stay tuned and take notes so what made me decide to become a vegetarian were two big events. Number one, I was doing some neuroscience research at the University of North Texas Health and Science Center. And um, I was doing phytoestrogen research, which phytoestrogens are plant-based estrogens. So I was researching the effects of plant-based estrogens on the body. And through that, I was really learning like the positive effects that plants can have on you um, when it comes to like preventing cancer, increasing energy, and just a lot of long-term and like current recent short-term effects that uh, positive effects that plants can have on you so i became very very interested in like mm, maybe i should like really start eating a lot healthier at the time i was not a healthy eater at all i was like cheeseburgers and french fries type you know i was in college i was very much like Whatever was there, I was gonna eat it. I didn't eat pork, never ate pork, but I still was like a meat eater, you know, um, and very unhealthy meat eater. I was in Texas, Whataburger was right down the street, so I was like living off of Whataburger and Mexican food. It was horrible. And at the time, I was almost 400, okay? I was about 400 pounds. My weight was 396, that was my highest weight. I was a size 26 jeans, you know, very unhealthy, sweet sweating in the winter time, snowing outside. It was bad, y'all. But I knew I needed a change and I was already thinking like, I definitely need to start eating much healthier. So doing that research and understanding the positive effects that plants can have on the body, I was like, let me start incorporating more veggies into my diet. But I didn't make the decision to come, become a full-blown vegetarian until I started really fully understanding what was happening to the meat that we were putting in our body. Um, I started really like learning, investigating and learning like what was the process of the meat from farm all the way to the meat plant and into the uh, grocery stores and into our kitchens and on our plate and how the nutrients would change over time, especially with cooking, um, the effects of the blood and on our blood, the animal blood on our blood, cow's milk on our body, etc., etc. And I noticed that a lot of side, the negative side effects that were associated with meat eating, I was experiencing. Um, and I just really started noticing the negative effects that eating meat started having on my body. So I decided to make a change. Um this whole video, I'm keeping it all the way real, y'all. This is me at a size 26. I was not healthy at all. I was still vegetarian. I'm going to talk about how I was that big and vegetarian, making unhealthy decisions. But this is me now at a size 18, a long journey. But this is how I did it. Uh, while I was in Texas, I just went through like a whole spiritual awakening in Texas. I started freeforming my hair. So these are physical effects of my spiritual awakening. I started freeforming my hair. I had a big afro. I started freeform locking it. I'll insert some pictures of that. Um, and then I also started becoming a vegetarian. I started eating much healthier, just being more conscious of various forms of life around me, animals, plants, etc., cetera. Um, and just being more kind to myself, to my spirit, to nature, and to other beings around me. So that's where my journey as a vegetarian started. This is my Texas days. As you can see, my little freeform locks button at the top of my fro. I was just starting my journey of being vegetarian and changing my life. Now, the transition from being a meat eater to a vegetarian was different. And I say different because I definitely learned a lot over time. When I first started becoming vegetarian, um, I was what I call a 
french fries, Oreos, and cheese pizza vegetarian. I was a very unhealthy vegetarian. And then I experienced some weight loss. I went down probably to like 375, but I still was a very big girl. And I realized it was because I was eating unhealthy. Um, yes, I wasn't eating meat, but instead of eating meat, I was just eating a plate full of french fries. And so I would go to McDonald's and get a large fry, a fruit and yogurt parfait, and an apple pie and be like, oh, I got my vegetarian meal. You know, I still was very unhealthy and a lot of vegetarians do this. A lot of vegetarians replace the meat on their plate with more starch as opposed to extra vegetables. And that's the mistake I was making in the beginning. So I was living like that as a vegetarian for about a year. I was doing a lot of meat replacements, a lot of Morning Star products. Um, I was eating a lot of like the veggie bacon, the veggie sausage. And don't get me wrong, during this time I was making some very creative vegetarian dishes. Like anything that you could make with meat, I was making it meatless. Now this photo is a little blurry, but I was about 380 here and still vegetarian. Once again, it wasn't healthy. Um, and it wasn't until about 2015, so about three years into my vegetarian journey, where in my unhealthy vegetarian journey, where I started realizing that I needed to make a change. So what sparked me deciding to make that change was um, in 2015, I had moved back to New York and I realized that I was just completely unhealthy. My weight, I was 370 something and I was unhealthy i lived at the time i lived about a mile away from the train station it would be snowing outside and this was like my wake up call it would be snowing outside and i would be sweating walking to the train it was i had to go up two flights of stairs to get to the train because i was at an above ground train station by the time i would get up to the top of the steps i would be exhausted after walking almost a mile going up the steps I would be exhausted. It would be cold outside, but I would be drenched. Like physically, you could see me drenched in sweat. And I'm a face sweater. I don't really sweat in my body. I sweat in my face. You would see my whole face red, drenched in sweat and just exhausted. And one day, I made that climb to the top of the stairs and it was a Muslim brother at the top of the stairs. And he looked at me and he was like, sister, you are a beautiful woman. And that's all he said, but he just looked at me like, sis, you know you gotta get it together. And I felt it, you know, it was the Islamic connection. I felt it, like I, I was like, thank you, brother. But I knew that he, it, it, it was like an underlying, like, come on, sis, you gotta do better than this. And I needed to hear that and I needed to experience that because even though I felt it, I definitely, I don't feel like I had anyone around me who really told me like, girl, you getting, too big for your britches, literally. <laughs> literally, okay, you getting too big for your britches, you know, like, um, and granted, in hindsight, when I asked my friends, they all be like, girl, we did not know, like, we didn't know this, but just feeling so unhealthy, and I would be like, oh, I'm vegetarian, but it was like, okay, but girl, you big, still, very big. And not to say that you can't be a thick vegetarian because I'm still a thick vegetarian. I'm, I went from a 26 to an 18. Um, so I'm an 18 now, which is still very much plus size. I'm still a thick sister. However, I definitely realized that I needed to make that change to be more healthy. I told y'all I keeps it all the way real. This is when I was 375, still almost 400 and vegetarian, y'all. So to become more healthy, what I started doing was um, I started replacing those meat subs with vegetables. I started eating way more plant-based. Um, and I just started really like cutting out as much of the starches. I started cutting back on portions. And I started really eating as a plant-based vegetarian as opposed to simply a vegetarian. So for the past uh, about four years, I've been a plant based vegetarian and I'm still growing in my journey still working to be even more plant-based the goal is to ultimately be 100% plant-based right now I'm about 70% plant-based I still definitely have like some breads I'm not vegan yet um once in a while I'll still have some cheese some mac and cheese around the holidays okay um I still have some egg and cheeses once in a while you know uh <laughs> Um, so, but once again, and this is the thing about being vegetarian or transitioning from being a meat eater to vegetarian, that transition period is real. And my advice on the transition period is simply do not put too much pressure on yourself, but set incremental goals to get where you are. Do not just automatically go straight from being a meat eater to 100% raw vegan. 
it's not gonna happen and i'm not gonna say not gonna happen because i'm pretty sure there are some people out there who did it and some people who are still doing it but to be most effective please be sure to transition by making incremental goals for example if you are a meat lover maybe do a meatless monday go from doing a meatless monday to eating meat only two days out the week um and having the other five days be uh no meat then maybe only have meat one day a week and then try to do 100 percent vegetarian and then you can incrementally progress to being 100 percent plant plant-based uh vegetarian and then potentially be vegan or you can like you know just whatever fits you whatever flows you your boat you know whatever works for your body but don't put the pressure on yourself just to go straight up into being 100 percent raw vegan immediately this is a journey nobody is perfect take step by step by step i have friends who i have a friend particularly who i'm thinking of and she is vegetarian but she's like she's transitioning so she will still once in a while when that popeye's chicken sandwich came out baby she was in line okay now i have not eaten any meat not a single morsel of meat um in seven years so since the day i decided to stop eating meat i never ate it again but i also wasn't a huge meat lover yes i enjoyed a burger yes i enjoyed some good oxtails every once in a while but i wasn't like a huge gotta have meat with every meal i'm a sides girl okay i'm a bread girl that was my thing and that's the part that i'm still transitioning out of you see that's what i'm saying incremental steps that's the part that i'm still transitioning out of but if you are a meat lover please take your time going into the journey don't put too much pressure on yourself and realize this journey is yours no judgment zone so a common myth is that vegetarians do not have a lot of options on what to eat and that is definitely not true um what i eat in a day very much changes so i'm not even going to say what i eat in a day i'm just going to tell you guys on a regular basis what are like my main go-to options for things to eat so i'm going to start with breakfast for breakfast um i normally will have oatmeal i love oatmeal especially like fresh homemade oatmeal um i like simple oatmeal like i I'll do um, oats with coconut milk. I'll do some chia seeds. I like honey, cinnamon in my oatmeal. And that's pretty much it for me. Sometimes I'll cut up some bananas in there. Lately, I've been in a huge banana obsession. So bananas have been in everything. I've been eating a lot of bananas, which that brings me to like another thing I love for breakfast, fresh fruit. I'm not a huge breakfast eater, honestly. So when I do want get want some breakfast or I get some breakfast, it's normally just like whatever is close. Um, and the morning i normally drink a lot of herbs i drink herbs every morning so a lot of tea and coffee i do a cup of coffee in the morning or a shot of espresso um which is just a traditional thing i come from a panamanian family on my dad's side big coffee drinkers so a shot of espresso in the morning and for those of you who don't know uh coffee suppresses the appetite so i normally don't really have appetite in the morning but if i do have something it'll be like oatmeal uh fresh fruit once in a while i'll get an egg and cheese from the bodega by me i live in new york so i get an egg and cheese by the bodega by me that's once in a while though but mainly when i do get breakfast it's oatmeal or fruit as stated in the video, I definitely drink a lot of herbs in the morning. I am a herb lady. I've been studying herbs since I was very, very young. Um, and the benefit of drinking herbs in the morning is plentiful. It gives a lot of energy, replenishes the body, naturally detoxes the body, clarifies the blood, clarifies the major organs in the body, and just really, really, really rebalances, rebalances us and makes sure that we maintain homeostasis throughout the day. So drink your herbs. For lunch, I'll do now lunch is like my my meal time because it went, by the time i get home um i really don't want dinner like that so lunch is like my main go-to meal i normally eat lunch uh by, by 12 or one o'clock and at that time i'm probably doing like a salad bowl a veggie bowl something like that um that is like my favorite 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 a good veggie bowl for me is it um a, sa a good salad a taco salad a taco bowl salad uh like from a good mexican restaurant i love that with a lot of veggies guacamole all that stuff in it i love it avocado toast um hummus and pretzels stuff like that i'll talk about that stuff when it comes to snacks hummus and pretzels and stuff but lunchtime those are my go-to uh taco bowl salad veggie bowl salad and then just mixing and matching different stuff this ironically was actually yesterday's lunch and i just thought it was funny to start a picture because it's real 
I work. So if I don't bring lunch to work, if I order lunch, I'm ordering like a veggie bowl, um, taco bowl salad. I'm ordering, um, what else? Uh, basically the veggie version of anything. I always ask people like, what you getting? Get me the veggie version. And that's what I'll get. So I can get anything that anyone else gets, but I just get the veggie version of it. For example, um, like one of my coworkers, she's loved tostados. So I'll be like, okay, give me the veggie tostados. Uh, if somebody else be like, oh, I'm getting, um, I'm going to like, uh, red lobster. I'll be like, okay, well, give me the pilaf rice and get me the broccoli and a baked potato and um, I'll take the asparagus or something like that. And that'll be that. So I'll do the pilaf rice or the baked potato, not both. The pilaf rice or the baked potato, the asparagus, the broccoli, and that's my meal from Red Lobster. So any restaurant, I can get anything vegetarian from. The, so I don't even bother letting. I don't even bother trying to pick the restaurant and telling people like, oh, I'm vegetarian. So can we go somewhere that's vegetarian friendly? That battle is, because people, you know, that battle is just like, uh -uh. I just tell people, y'all pick what y'all want, and I'll find a vegetarian something there. And it's mainly consists of me getting a lot of whatever's on the sides. If I go to Olive Garden, Olive Garden has a good portobello mushroom vegetarian option, um, but I'm getting soup, salad, and breadsticks mainly. I'm getting the minestrone soup, which is the veg the vegetarian soup, uh, breadsticks, and salad, and that's what I'm getting from Olive Garden. So that's what I'll do for lunch. We mainly order for lunch a lot. If I do bring lunch, it'll normally be just like some leftovers or something I had the day before. Yeah. What is the typical dinner? I'll post some uh, pictures at the end of this video of things that like, I normally cook for, for dinner, but really just like vegetarian anything. So anything that you can make regular, I can make a vegetarian style. And that's really what it is. When you become vegetarian, you just have to get creative. So when it comes to like cooking, what is your favorite meal and find a way to make a vegetarian version of that. Um, you can replace a lot of those meat flavors with using smoke flavor. Um, you can use smoked paprika. You can use liquid smoke. You can do, you know, that kind of gives it that smoky meat taste for those of you who like that if you are missing the meat texture go to jackfruit stuff like that um jackfruit definitely has like a meaty type of texture if you cook it right a lot of people use jackfruit to make like pulled pork sandwiches and it's made with jackfruit vegetarian or vegan um but you, yeah you can use things like that there is a sub a plant-based sub for everything so just do like a lot of research and just try to plant-based sub everything Something to strive for when you are trying to be at least 70 to 75 percent plant based is to try to do a veggie version of everything at home. Vegetarian stir fries, these veggie quesadillas. Um, I still use meat subs every once in a while, as you can see here with these spicy vegan chorizo uh, empanadas that I, I got the vegan chorizo from Trader Joe's. Once in a while, I'll still use it, but mostly plant based. As you can see by this veggie stew, lots and lots of salads. Try to be as plant based as possible. Well, There's nothing wrong with having a little meat subs every once in a while, but mostly plants, plants, plants. Now, my favorite portion, I am a snacker, okay? I'm a snacker, y'all. So I'm about to give y'all everything I eat vegetarian-wise that's like healthy snacks. Number one, peanuts, nuts, cashews, pistachios, all kinds of nuts. That is always a go-to snack. Um, popcorn. Smart food popcorn, skinny pop popcorn, the white cheddar skinny pop popcorn. I love it. Um, what else? Uh, the dried veggies. So Trader Joe's has like dried broccoli. They have a whole good dried vegetable section, dried fruit and dried veggies. They have a whole good dried fruit and vegetable section that I love. And my students love it too. So I take like healthy snacks and stuff to school with me to give to the kids just so they can see like you can have snack food and it still be good, healthy, and fun. Um, and they love it. The broccoli, the dried broccoli, they love a lot. The dry, the kale chips and stuff, they love a lot. So I'll get a lot of that stuff. Um, Another big thing for me is hummus, pretzels, vegetables and hummus, anything in hummus. I love hummus, so I do that quite often. Um, uh, what else? A lot of fruit. Um, dark chocolate. I love very dark chocolate. I don't like milk chocolate. I like super duper duper dark chocolate, like dark, 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 like black, almost unsweetened bacon chocolate. I like dark, dark 
dark chocolate so that's a big thing for me if i can get really dark chocolate i would love that but not too often just once in a blue but yeah that's what i get when i'm like craving a, like a snack or i feel it snacky i keep a lot of like nuts and stuff with me i have cashews and pistachios and stuff everywhere um at home and at work uh i also have like a lot of hummus in my refrigerator it's a little ridiculous yogurt i do a lot of yogurt um, I don't do as much yogurt as I used to because I'm trying to cut back on the dairy, but definitely some yogurt. Um, Chobani's is my favorite. I love Greek yogurt, so Chobani's is my favorite. What else? I just went to the grocery store. I'm trying to think of everything I bought. Those are, that'll, that'll be like the healthy snacking, you know. Um, now, unhealthy snacks, which I still do every once in a while, you know. <laughs> You know, but don't don't uh, don't 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 do the unhealthy snacking. If you're gonna be a vegetarian and you try to be on a way uh, uh, road to a healthy journey, definitely focus on healthy healthy snacking. Peace, family. So something I almost forgot to mention is how much I veganize all baked goods at home. I replace everything with vegan cream cheese, vegan butter, coconut sugar instead of white sugar. When I'm making dough, anything with dough, I use oat flour, almond flour coconut flour um, and you can veganize any baked good and that's a way to have healthy snacking overall my vegetarian journey has definitely benefited me a lot um, it has been a large part of my weight loss journey so as I told y'all I was almost 400 pounds my highest weight was 396 I was a size 26 I am presently a size 18 and so I don't know my exact way I actually was expecting to get a scale today but somebody stole my package <laughs> Um, so I don't know my exact weight, but I, the last time I weighed myself, I was down over, over 150 pounds. So I lost a lot of weight and being vegetarian and being plant-based vegetarian helped a lot with that. I probably record more videos on my weight loss journey because there were definitely a lot of other factors that would help me lose weight. So I'll record a separate video on that. But yeah, being vegetarian has helped me a lot. It has helped my skin clear up a lot. I used to struggle with acne really bad. You can look at my ancient secret natural skin care tutorial to see like how I take care of my skin now but being vegetarian and hold as a whole just helped me focus on being more natural and more plant-based internally and externally like what I put in my body and what I put on the outside of my body so it has helped a lot um I feel better I feel lighter I have way more stamina, which definitely is contributed to the weight loss, but the weight loss is also very much contributed to me being more plant-based. If you have any questions about my vegetarian journey or anything else, just please hit me up. Um, I have an example here of like what I eat on a regular basis. So this was my dinner for tonight. I'll do a little close up. This is just Brussels sprouts, kale, sweet potatoes, and onions and stuff like that and it's just like a little kale salad that i had a lot of sweet potatoes brussels sprouts things like that and this would be like my dinner for tonight and i love it great mixing and matching different flavors once again you have to get very creative open up your palate you know no more cheeseburgers or french fries y'all plant-based the goal of 2020 is to be like almost 100% plant-based. I say almost because I know I ain't going to be perfect. And I'm just real about that. But almost 100% plant-based. Join me on the journey. I wish you wellness. I wish you light. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below or DM me on Instagram at the Queen Po. But preferably leave, preferably leave them in the comments below because my Instagram inbox be getting flooded and I don't have time to get to all the questions and I feel bad. I focus a lot more on my YouTube comments than I do on my Instagram. Please. Leave them in the comments below and I'll be sure to get back to you. Peace and light, love, wellness.